Yeah. We're going to start the meeting. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting, may transmit this meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Um, could I get a roll call by each committee member, please? Um, uh, Mr. Cantara Oliver, historical commission. Tommy Dyer, city council appointee. James Souza, mayoral appointee. John Brandt, conservation. John Franker, mayoral appointee. Charles Jones, one appointee. And we're missing Ken Pacheco. He resigned as of our last meeting. Uh, he was also a city council appointee, and they are in the process of appointing somebody else. I would like to. You know, uh, thank Ken for his years on this uh, board. He's been here right from the inception, and um, I know for sure I will miss him. Uh, he was invaluable with his information, and um, I wish him luck. You know, in the future. We also have Sandy Dennis, our secretary here. Um, I just wanted her here because there's been a lot of correspondence with emails with her, so I thought it was appropriate to have her with us. Um, this. We, this special meeting is being held because the FY19 appropriation order was sent down to City Council to approve all the projects we had originally approved um, and we're waiting for their approval. But in that discussion with the City Council, they, with, with a couple of confusions on one particular project, 200 Bank Street, it was requested by the councilors to send this um, proposal back to us for discussion and hopefully clarify two questions that were were had on this project. Um, I'm just going to give you a little background on this. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's why I have Sandy here too. Uh, um, item number three is citizen input. Does anybody have anything to say that is not a part of the affiliation uh, people in this uh, project? So item number four is the discussion of the FY uh, 18 project. But I want to give everyone a, a brief synopsis on... The acoustics in this room are rather poor. Could you just... Speak louder? Up, but not in the okay. I would appreciate it. My hearing is going. We'll do. Old. We'll, we'll do. So I want to do a brief synopsis on the um, sequence of events which have led us up to here. Um, the first um, project is the, the FY18 uh, funding application that was done for the 200 Bank Street project states part of this budget is for 10 third floor windows at $50,053. That was in the request for the funding. There were other items in, but we ended up only appropriating the amount for the 10 third floor windows. So at the CPC meeting on May 1st, 2017, a motion was made to fund $50,053 for 10 third floor windows and the motion was passed. The City Council approved all the FY18 proposed projects including the 200 Bank Street on May 27th of 2017. CPC Historical Preservation Award grant agreement was um, written and stated on um, November 28th. The applicant Hanover Properties LLC sought funds for replacement of 10 windows located at 200 Bank Street. This contract was signed by the CPC chairman at the time, Ken Pacheco, um, Dave Heber, owner of Hanover Properties LLC, Mayor Jazel Correa, and Corporation Counsel Judge Joe Macy. Um, in question here is why the contractor has not finished being paid for work done on 200 Bank Street. And another question is why a letter of completion has not been written stating work was finished according to the Secretary of Interior Standards. Um, the document is needed to uh, complete this project. So basically that's the synopsis of where we are. So um, I would like if possible for all parties involved to come to the table, that being Dave Heber from Hanover Properties, um, the people associated with the Architectural Preservation Group are, who are requesting um, 
to who are missing funds allocation, and also Richard Ventrone of Ventrone Architecture, who is the architect on this project. So I appreciate all of you coming to the table. We finally have everyone involved for the first time together on this. So um, that being said, um, I'd like Dave Eber to hand over Poppy to speak first if he has anything he wants to um, add to this project. I mean, we're trying. I would like it to stay just with the 200 Hanover project. There's a lot of us that have affiliations with other prop projects in the city, but if they could just stay with this, I, I would appreciate that. So, David, I'll let you speak first. I just want to uh, introduce myself. Actually, I'm sorry. Um, if, if everybody wants to go down the line here first and introduce themselves with their name, their affiliation, and their address, that would be great. Uh, David Hebert. 91 Sycamore Lane, Westport. And your affiliation is? I own Hanover Properties. Good evening, my name is David Baker. I'm an attorney uh, with an address of 10 North Main Street, Fall River. I represent Hanover Properties, LLC, and David Ebert. Steve Tyson, uh, President, Architectural Preservation. Uh, Where are we located? We're at uh, 119 Meadow Street, Walk, Rhode Island. Maureen Tyson, Office Manager, Architectural Preservation Group also at 119 Meadow Street in Warwick. Richard Ventrone, Ventrone Architecture, 94 Old Quarry Road, North Situate, Rhode Island. Robert Leach um, with Ventrone Architecture. Thank you. If, you want, if we'll speak a little bit louder, I know back there they possibly might Sorry. not hear that, that's okay. I mean, so I'll let Dave speak for us on um, the project if you have anything you want to add in first. Well, uh, we're here because I owe Mr. Tyson the four thousand and some odd dollars, and as it was instructed to me through this board, Mr. Dias, uh, a few meetings ago, uh, made it clear we need a final sign-off in compliance with, I believe, the National Park Service. If the, the, the determination is correct, I've sent Secretary of Interior standards. Secretary of Interior standards. I've sent emails, which I've copied your board through Ms. Uh, Sandy Dennis, and I've asked Mr. Ventrone, who in one of his correspondence stated that he's going to check his records and get back to me. I've never heard back. I don't have the final sign off. And I have no problem giving them the check if the job is done and they're going to take uh, responsibility for the, the final the product. And that's the way I've always maintained. Anything else you'd like to add? Or? I think that's pretty simple. So, if I may, um, one of the concerns we had, first of all, Mr. Heber was asked to attend tonight um, by Secretary Dennis, but one of the concerns that we had was. Um, Although Mr. Hebert didn't attend, nor did I, um, I viewed a video of the uh, meeting with the City Council and the testimony that was given by yourself and um, Mr. Pacheco, who has since resigned. And um, the first question we had is the threshold question is, you know, why is this meeting actually taking place? What's the point? Is it to get information or is it to take a revote on a vote that's already been taken by the Commission and a recommendation was already made in? Mr. Hebert's project was included in the fiscal year 2019 budget. Well, the city council did not want to take a vote that they were required to take, and because of these two con these two questions, these two things in question, so their recommendation was to send it back to us and discuss it again. So that's why we're here. And our question is whether or not it's a discussion to obtain information, or whether it's um, going to be a revote. It's going to be discussion and a revote. With respect to the issue of a revote. Um, there's nothing that I can see either in Chapter 44B or in the ordinance adopted by the City of Fall River that would provide for the Commission to take a revote after they voted to recommend a particular project. In fact, um, the ordinance says uh, under Section 2 367, the committee shall submit its proposed budget and anticipated cost to the mayor, who shall in turn submit said budget and anticipated cost to the City Council who may approve or veto appropriations made pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44B. It doesn't have any language in the ordinance that would address a scenario where the commission has made a recommendation to approve an, um, a particular um, applicant, um, and then after attending a meeting with the city council to re-vote on the issue. There's nowhere in um, the ordinance nor in Chapter 44B, specifically Section 5, that even provides for the authority of the Commission to revote on an issue already okay. recommended. Well, what I'd like to do is bring the person, the counselor who put this forward to us to re-discuss, 
So if, if Steve Kamara, who would come up front, please, would um, discuss, would, would possibly uh, answer to that, I would appreciate it. Because I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know that. I appreciate what you're saying. Um, I think Steve Kamara might know a little bit more than I do about this particular issue, whether we can rebuild, if that is what he wants us to do. But I believe that's why they sent it back to us. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a single member of a nine-member body, so I don't speak for the council. Uh, the council ha had made a decision to refer this back to this committee just for further discussion and review. Um, so not to review. Well, once it's back in this committee, this committee does what it chooses, and it operates under its own rules, and I assume somewhat under the rule, uh, Robert's Rules of Order, uh, or Cushing's Manual, uh, whatever rules that you operate under, uh, you have the option to reconsider and to uh, revote uh, based upon the rules that you have. I don't think the council um, had any specific direction as to what you do. Uh, basically, it wanted further consideration of the matter because of issues that were raised. And now it's back in your hands and you do what you want to do. And I assume at some point you'll It'll be sent what, back to the council. But he's saying that it's, you're saying that we cannot revote. Like, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I don't realize that. I appreciate that coming forward with that. Um, you operate under your own rules. You, you have access uh, to John, your own. I, is, is that, I would like to, John's an attorney. Yes. So I would um, appreciate your I, I on this. I personally don't see how we come to the point tonight where we revote. It's already been discussed. We had public hearings. It's been voted on. Um, and I didn't find a mechanism. Attorney Baker said uh, I did a little research too. I did not find a mechanism for a reboot. So I kind of a head scratcher as to why we're here. Oh, I, I understand that, but I mean, I don't, I don't know how we can reboot. Okay. If it's informational, that's one thing. I think uh, Mr. Hebert you know, explained the situation with the sign off and the final payment. Um, I understand you have you have the ability to make the final payment once the payoff is uh, once the uh, sign off has been filed. I didn't know they'd be here tonight. I would have brought the check. I, and I can probably get one drafted if I have to sign off tonight and, and satisfies this board. I have no problem with that. Never had. If I may, Mr. Souza, just to add this. For the sake of discussion only, even if you could infer that somewhere in the ordinance or in the statute that a um, commission such as this would have the, uh, the authority and the ability to revote. I would suggest to you that there would need to be compelling circumstances to take a revote, and from what we we viewed on the um, on the video that took place at the city council, um, one of the things that we're going to ask to be done tonight is not only that the commission stand by its vote and its recommendation, but to also correct the record with the city council, because clearly at that meeting, um, in which you and uh, Mr. Pacheco testified, there were certain facts that um, were incorrect um, that we believe led the um, some of the city councilors to have some concerns that otherwise would be unfounded. Um, also too, there was some omissions of facts that we believe should have been brought to the attention of the city council that were not brought to the attention of the city council. And what we took out of that meeting was one councilor in particular, uh, Councilwoman LeBeau, um, indicated that um, on the basis that she believed that the architect hadn't been paid and that the contractor hadn't been paid at all. That was certainly the inference that I got from watching it. Uh, coupled with the fact that she was displeased with um, a, a posting on social media made by Mr. Hebert, um, that she would never vote for a project involving Mr. Hebert. I would suggest to you that, um, number one, she was mistaken about the facts of the case. And number two... That has nothing to do with us. But number two is, um, is that... Um, it being sent back to the commission um, by the city council based upon um, the concerns of a single councilwoman about a social, meeting, uh, social media posting would not rise anywhere near to the level necessary I for the- I believe it was sent back just by her though. Well, uh, perhaps not. Our councilor here said it was sent by the whole board. Right, but based upon the reasons that were articulated at the meeting by certain city councilors as to why they wanted it sent back, we wouldn't believe that even if there was an inference that could be drawn that under appropriate compelling circumstances you could take a revote, that it would be appropriate to take that drastic measure based upon what took place at that meeting, in large part because 
the appropriate facts were not before the city council. In, in particular, um, um, it was stated um, um, at that city council meeting that the architect had not been paid. In fact, um, when the city council members... Um, I'm not sure if that's accurate. But, but I, do you know who actually said that? Um, Ken Pacheco said Ken Pacheco that. I believe it was Mr. Pacheco, specifically yeah. in response to an inquiry as to whether I, I or not Mr. I, but I believe it was because Architectural Preservation Group business was not paid the money. But there were really two issues being discussed that, that evening. Number one was, was Mr. Patron, the architect, paid? And number two was um, Mr. Tyson. Well, that's why we have paid. everyone here. So we will find out from the architect with it. Maybe it was a misconception. Maybe it was a misunderstanding. Maybe something was said wrong as far as the architect not being paid. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that the people who did the work on the window was not paid. We will let Mr. Ventron speak of his um, uh, invoices, whether he was paid or not, and, and then we will move forward with that. We're not taking a vote right now. It's something this board will decide. I'm not deciding that myself. So sure. we will take that into consideration, and we will vote as a board on that. Just if I may, um, I think the facts will speak for themselves that Mr. Ventron, the architect, had been paid in full. So to the extent that a representation was made to the council that he wasn't paid, that was inaccurate. And it, it didn't allow the members of the city council to make an informed decision as to whether or not to vote well, and how to vote that Well, now they'll know, and it's going to go back to that sure. anyway. One other point of clarification is that um, uh, my client tells me that at one of the previous meetings before the commission, the issue of whether or not Mr. Tyson on the appropriation made in fiscal 2018 had been paid in full, and that the commission, in particular yourself and Mr. Pacheco, were aware of the fact that there was still approximately $4,300 outstanding um, to Mr. Tyson, and that the reason that that amount of money was being withheld was a concern about the quality of certain workmanship on the project that was conveyed to my client by Mr. Ventrone. And one of the more troubling things that we saw at the, at the city council meeting was that when the issue of the contractor not getting paid, it seemed as if um, Mr. Hebert, and certainly you're left with the impression, if you didn't know anything else about this case, that he didn't pay Mr. Tyson at all, when the facts are that he withheld a relatively minuscule portion of the overall contract price to Mr. Tyson, and he withheld it because out of a concern that was expressed to him by the architect. And in that meeting, um, I believe it was Councilman Joe Camara, uh, he provided the golden opportunity, um, quite frankly and respectfully, for you or Mr. Um, Pacheco uh, to step in and clarify that point, to say it's not as if Mr. Hebert didn't pay the contractor anything and pocketed the money. It's a relatively small portion. I think it, it, it amounts to 7% of the overall contract price that was withheld. It it doesn't matter. It's still, if, it, if that's the case, it's still old. It doesn't it, matter. And when, when Mr. Camara, Councilman Camara, pointed out that there are often reasons why property owners don't pay contractors, I agree with you. we think that the appropriate thing would have to have done would have been to well, point I, it I out. If I, if I could just finish. Holding money from a contractor is appropriate, I think, when a whole project isn't completed. I do agree with that. But when, when Councilman Kamara said that that would be a circumstance in which a property owner would be in the right, nobody pointed out to the council members that the amount of money being withheld is relatively small and that the reason it was being withheld was that my client had a legitimate concern that the contractor had not completed the if, job if and worked the like quality. If you remember from that meeting, we weren't there to respond to questions. If they asked us the questions, we would respond to them, but we were not there to question them or give answers that were not sure. asked to us. So that could be part of the reason why we did not respond. Sure. Well, what we're asking tonight is that um, without you know laying fault and blame and, and rehashing the past. We're not trying to lay fault no, and blame. No. And we're not either. We just want to make that clear. What we'd like done is, is for the commission to stand by its vote it's already made, stand by its recommendation, and also um, to clarify the record with the city council as a result of tonight's meeting we and the information you received. That's all we would ask. Thank, Thank you. You, well, you know, as, as a committee, we've met on these projects from September to June. During that time, I have never received a call from the city council or anybody with concerns to any of our projects. I mean, we had me twice, three times a month, and uh, the 50000 we gave was all spent for the funds that he took. You know, so as far as I'm concerned, I make a motion that we send back to City Council the recommendations we sent up. I, well, I think we, we have these other gentlemen here that I think 
Mr. Heber was allowed to speak. I don't think speak. it's going to change your vote. Well, I, I, I'm not asking anybody to change their vote. I'm not changing my vote. You're not changing your vote. That's not what we're talking about here. We need everyone at the table, which we finally have, and I want everyone here to have their say at this project because they're owed money. They say they're not giving money because they did the work, and then somebody is not, something's but wrong here. We're not responsible for that. We, the we, money we You know what, John? We're going we're gonna to speak our mind after they speak theirs, so I appreciate what you're saying. I just think it's a lot of grand standing for nothing. Well, that's fine, but I, they, John, Mr. Heber well, and his attorney. my vote's still on the floor. Mr. Heber spoke, and I think it's oh, only sorry. fair to go on to the next person, sorry. the architect. Actually, before we go, so because we're talking about the vote, I think we should all be able to comment on that one issue, you know, before we go on. So okay. I, I also have an opinion on it. Uh, I believe we would be setting a very bad precedence if we do a revote because what it would set up for next year and for future years is that any time any counselor uh, or any individual is not happy with how the voting goes, they could say, send it back. And, and that was part of it where um, Councilor Kamara basically said, well, you know, if, if that project gets voted out, potentially the uh, cultural uh, center project could come, in, come back in. But I want to make it perfectly clear Regardless of what happens today, there's not ever going to be a revote to include another project that we haven't already appropriated. But I just wanted to make it perfectly clear that I think it would be a very bad precedence to um, basically just allow the city council to send it back to us for a revote. We've spent eight months, actually, I, we spent a year. Many of us pay, spend a lot of time talking to the developers, to the to all the different groups all the time. We have the all of the information that we need and we've all agreed on the process that we go by on how we vote. And that's based on a point system. And that point system is based on looking at the application. We agree and disagree on some items. We agree and disagree with each other all the time. But at the end of the day, we understand that we've always agreed that when, when we vote, that's it. I, I can tell you every single year there's not uh, a project that I said oh, I'm not in favor of that one. You know, but I, I believe in the process. And that's all I'd like okay. to say about that. Would anybody else Mr. like to discuss anything on Mr. 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 I, may I just say yes. one thing? Because I have a 6.30 meeting I need to get to in a few minutes, but I just wanted to First of all, I'll clarify because Mr. Kamara's name has been used, and there were two Kamaras on the council, and Good. I just think it's I think it's important that it be specified who. And I, I also think, in, in, in response to Commissioner Brandt's point, it's not the position, nor should it be the responsibility of councilors to individually come to you and try to derail your work. And I don't think any councilor ever came to you to try to direct you on how to do anything. That you are an independent body that needs to do its work. Uh, also, I want to underscore the council did not move this item back to your committee for a revote. The council moved to forward this back to your committee, not with any direction. I think the only thing that was clear was that the council was lacking information and was trying to make a decision. And there was there was information coming from various sources, and uh, much much of it was opinion. Uh, not necessarily fact. Uh, I think any of us who have been in a business in relationship to a contractor, sometimes a contractor doesn't get paid because the contractor's not doing their work. Sometimes the contractor do doesn't get paid because someone's trying to hold back some money. We don't know what the cause is, but we just wanted to see resolution. And I do think that it is the place of the commission and the commission leadership to uh, edify the uh, deliberation of the council with information. So if uh, the com I don't think we have to necessarily ask a question of the chair. Uh, if there's some information that helps us get over the hump of confusion, and that's what was happening at the council meeting, there was confusion as to why a, a bill hadn't been paid and concern about was more money going to be given if yet there was a previous contract that had not been finalized. Uh, that we just wanted some information about why that's the case. From my brief uh, time here, it sounds like uh, Mr. Hebert was ready to write a check today or write a check tomorrow so this could go before the council on Thursday that everything has been resolved. The committee could then send it all back saying everything has been resolved as it relates to 2018 fiscal year. We're ready to move forward with, with fiscal year uh, 19. 
Uh, we reaffirm our vote of previous. You're not changing it. You know, that's possible. If, if Mr. Brand's motion prevails, that you reaffirm the position okay, that you I initially that. took. And then we proceed to take our action. Okay. Yeah. You know, but I think everyone wants to take, they, they, everyone wants to do the right thing on behalf of the taxpayers because all of this is about taxpayer money. So as long as everything is being done and all of us want to see buildings preserved, I think that's one thing clearly that uh, the council uh, specified is that we want to see this program succeed, whether it's a nonprofit organization or a government building that's or a privately owned building. If it's an historic property, the money goes to improving that historic property. So I think the question as to uh, whether it's privately owned or nonprofit corporation or government owned, as long as it's a building that's going to enhance the city's commitment to historic preservation, I think uh, we're ready to move forward. Okay. That's just my opinion. Okay. Um, Thank you. Is there anybody else on the board have anything to say to, uh, about the, Mr. Hubert's testimony? Um, then we'll move on to Mr. Ventrone from Ventrone Architecture. Right, good Go evening. Ahead. Am I speaking loudly enough? Tell me if I'm not, please. Um, um, Mr. Chairman, first I'll say I have been fully paid for my services by Mr. Hebert. He does not owe me any money. So I that think, could have been a misconception. I think architect, I architectural preservation group, I suspect that's probably the confusion. If I did say that, I apologize. Yeah, I have been fully paid by him. He does not owe me any money. Um, I think also I've heard a few dates thrown out. So just timeline-wise, just let me review it because I think there's a little confusion. Um, the application, my... I issued construction documents, the finished construction documents for this project on September 23rd of 2016, stamped drawings. Mr. Tyson was chosen, the Architectural Preservation Group, in January, and on January 30th, that contract was signed with Mr. Hebert. So, 2017. So, remember, at this point, an application for any money, none has come before you all. You have not seen an application. We did not file it at that point. The due date is February 1st. At that point, the project was, there had been five storm-damaged windows. They all need restoration. But there had been five storm-damaged windows on the east side of the building, for which Mr. Hebert had an insurance settlement to restore those windows. And those had to be done. They were leaking. He, more, we had shown to him more damage was being done, and he wanted to do the right thing and get them restored. So. The project was for five windows on the east side of the building. So a contract was signed and uh, an application for payment number one was submitted in February 13th. It was paid on February 27th. That was only $2,713 for really startup mobilization. And the contractor was on site on the 28th of February. So I think that's before any money was ever awarded. I might be wrong on that, but five I think windows. five windows on the east side. That contract was for $27,127. Because the grant agreement says 10 windows. But remember, we, we, he certainly had 10 windows to do. For, in fact, all the windows need to be done if they're going to be restored. But, but so we put in a request to do, to do 10 windows, to do all, you know, all of the windows need to be done as well. But yeah, the other 10 need to be restored, not to the degree that the five on the side had to be. But, but absolutely, Mr. Hebert wanted to bring the building back. Now, can I interrupt for Certainly. one second? So this is the uh, grant agreement with the Community Preservation Act Historical Preservation Award Agreement. This award agreement is made between the City of Fall River through its Community Preservation Committee, acting by the Fall River Historical Commission and the recipient. Hanover Properties, 188 Tremont Street, Fall River, Mass. 271. The purpose of this grant agreement is to implement the following award. Recipient name, David Hebert. Hanover Properties LLC. The project description is the applicant, Hanover Properties LLC, sought funds for replacement of 10 windows, formerly Elks Lodge, located at 200 Bank Street. This is the grant agreement signed by um, Mr. Hebert, Mr. Pacheco, our mayor, and our Corporation Council Judge Macy. So I'm just I'm yeah. just saying this is and what we awarded funds for. Four. So so just so in, in, just to clarify, so my contract with Mr. Hebert was for a total of fourteen thousand eight hundred and ninety-five dollars. Of that, ten thousand five hundred and seventy-five was for the existing conditions drawings. They had nothing to do with the work, but we needed to have a base set of documents for the whole document. And four thousand three hundred and twenty was for the construction documents to do these windows. It really wasn't a complicated job. Um, so so that, so that, so just so we understand that, that so that project moving forward, I had never, I've never seen the document you're referring to. So, 
you know, the project moved forward. There were some difficulties. We had some art glass that arrived, absolutely destroyed. I know I sent um, some photographs that came out rather badly because you couldn't do them in color. So I, 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 I sent, I brought copies as well. So that delayed us. They arrived destroyed. Um, and that is actually from the... And when was that that they were arrived? Um, Time frame, even a month? I can tell you. Uh, May 18th of 2017. May 18th. Of 2017, I received an email from, from Maureen at the at Architectural Preservation Group that, because David was very eager to get it done, you can't blame him, but it, the glass, it, Steve Tyson kept being promised, you know, next week, next Tuesday, it's right around the corner, it just kept being delayed and delayed. And when it arrived finally, it was very damaged. So that delayed us further. Um, so that was, that was, again, May 18th, that email arrived with those photographs. And that email was actually sent by the uh, distributor that received the glass from the art glass company. Um, so that had to be reordered and had to be re-delivered. Uh, but, but then moving forward, um, application number two was April 24th. It was paid April 27th. Application number three was April 28th. It was paid June 8th. So this was stages, stages of These are just stages of the application for payment by the contractor, the, the, the way to administer the contract, where he breaks down the percentages of work that so are completed. the involved by Architectural Preservation Group? Correct. Just so, again, let me clarify that too. Thank you for making, triggering that in me. The contract works. I have absolutely no contractual relationship with Mr. Tyson. The contract is between me and the owner and the contracts are between the owner and the contractor. And then the contract, both contracts, but the contract between the owner and the contractor states that I, the architect, will administer the contract. So we're in charge of making sure that the, co the, the construction is done in accordance with the construction documents, really our intent. Because the idea, of course, is that the owner isn't going to know that it's being done. That's why he hires an architect. So the architect is a guy that makes sure it's he does it correctly. I have the authority to reject work that isn't done correctly. I don't have the authority to add work that costs the owner more money without the owner's approval. So, so, that, so, so, so that's how the contract works. Um, we don't, in the contract states, have any authority over how the contractor does his work, when he does it, how many people he brings to the site. That is totally not our responsibility in a contract to state, the contract states it's their timeline, whether they do it correctly isn't in it at all our responsibility. Well, so now to Can paint, I ask one question certainly. To, I don't know who actually, if, what, is there a general contractor to this project? Yes, architectural preservation. Okay. Um, so, so, so now to payment into my letter, which is obviously the source. So they're owed, half of their final application for payment, which was made in June 8th, their final application for payment. I, I approved that application for payment, and then there was also a punch list, which is very minor. I just want to clarify, because it, someone said, I don't know who, that the quality or the, of their work. It wasn't the quality. There were a few minor items that needed to be corrected. It wasn't a matter of quality or the work performed was not what it should be. There was a, a cracked pane of glass in one window, and there was, there was a, an insert, a sill piece on the interior that needed to be put in that was simply a you know, one by piece of wood that needed to be nailed into the wood. That's it. That was, that was the only punch list, as it were, from me that needed to be done. I, I did that on June 23rd of 2017. So um, there were, it did take some time for the contractor to get there to bake that, to do that, but it was done certainly by the November, it was certainly done, and I could not find that here. And I asked Maureen as well to try to find that date they went out, she could not find it. But it was certainly done by the end of 2017. And they were two very minor things, but, um, but they needed to be done and they've been done. Um, so in terms of the letter, until the contract is closed out, the project isn't finished. So my hesitancy, really kind of refusal to write the letter, had to do entirely with the fact that there was money owed. So the reality is, and it says in the contract, after the architect has issued a certificate for payment, the owner shall make payment in a manner provided for in the contract document. So he's supposed to pay it once I say pay it. Now, 
If there's a little bit of outstanding work to be done, that's fine. We can retain that a small amount for that, but eight thousand, whatever it was, for nine thousand dollars isn't is is more far more than the than the level of the work. And again, it's always the goal is always to ensure, as the architect, that the owner isn't going to be left hanging. So, so by, there's so by the date of the award agreement to the city and Mr. Heber, all the work was finished. On the effect, date, yes, except for two, two relatively <coughs> minor things that, again, I'm not saying they didn't need to be done, they needed to be done. Yes, the work was finished on the contract, which was for five windows. So, of course, my hope was always that we'd move forward and we'd get money and we'd do the other windows, but that relationship didn't continue. So, so, so what can happen, again, the, the idea of all of these, there's a percentage on these applications for payment, is that there's never more money paid to the contractor than is left in the work. So that if Steve Tyson takes off and says, I'm not gonna finish, there's enough money for someone else to do it. And, the, and, he's, and he doesn't pay for anything, and that's my job, to make sure he's not paying for something that hasn't been done. So that's the whole idea of it. So at that point, while there was work that remained to be done, it could have been, and I think you requested that, Maureen, in an email, reduced to the relative fair value of the work to hold back to hold back nine thousand dollars for twelve hundred dollars worth of work is unreasonable and often in contracts as you approach the end there's a ten percent retainage often when you get to what's called um, substantial completion a contractor will request that the retainage be reduced to say five percent or three percent because you're holding so much money back from the whole project, but I've done most all of it, so to, you know, give me some of that now, because even if I walk away, you'll have enough money to do the work. So, so then the, and ultimately the work was done. So my, my um, resistance to the letter was, it really seems like a chicken egg thing here, but I, my obligation is to administer the contract. So you're not gonna send a letter out until well, I've all actually, the work is completed? I've given you that letter today everything. with a caveat. I've provided you with that letter. We, we received a letter from you at yeah. 423. And there's a hard copy of it. Yeah. So, so, you know, in the interest of closing this, I've provided a letter. But t technically, I would never do that until the project... Why did you project, give us this today? What? Why did you give us a lay saying from Because I, I was asked... But they're still not finished yeah, being I was, I was asked to do it. And, as you know, I put a caveat in that letter, right? The caveat being that... Um, is my, which is why I say, well, I say right in the letter. I don't have it in front of me here. Um, it is our understanding the contractor is still owed four thousand three hundred and sixty-five dollars and fifty cents, which is why we have not previously provided you with this letter, as the project is not technically closed. Thank you. So that's that is that is the sole reason the letter has not been forthcoming. It's very easy to write this letter. The work was done well and it's completed. But my hope is that he gets paid, so I did not want to say we're done when the contractor's owed $4,000. So could I ask you, like, I'd like to ask the board if anybody has questions to Mr. Ventro. Uh, anything here? Well, now, is the work completed? Yes. The work is completed. Well, what about the payment, though? No, is the, the payment is not completed. Satisfaction? Listen, the last correspondence I got here, I have, well, I have several correspondence, but to Mr. Ventrone's point, I believe he just stated that the work was done in June, correct? Do uh, we agree he said June that? June 2017. Yeah, okay. On September 18, 2017, I'll quote, Dave, I was away on Thursday and Friday in North Conway. I am unhappy that Steve hasn't gotten this done. We can't stand over the show. The sandblasting is frowned upon. I had asked a question about cleaning up some wood. Um, I haven't sent anyone else your way. Steve has to finish his own work. I'll call him again and report back. So as of September, the work wasn't finished? That was September 17th. Is that true? And this is what I dealt yeah. with for months. So in September, it still wasn't finished. You said so in the, June it was finished. The cr it was substantially complete. There oh. was a cracked pane of glass mm -hmm. and those pieces that needed to be replaced. So I, what I'd like to know is, is, uh, is everything finished at this point? Yes. And when did that point happen? At what date? Well, that's the, I, I'm, I'm very, un I'm very unhappy to say. We know when you wrote, when you, Maureen Tyson wrote Sandy Dennis on January 11th of 2018 saying, asking for payment and saying the work was completed months ago. She could not find the date that they sent someone out. I mean, um, this truly was done 
within a matter of hours. So it was it probably in what month right. and what year? It would have been let's let's call it November of 2017. Is that true? By November of 2017, the work was finished. I I believe it was substantially done. But the correspondence I had, there was a cracked pane, this that, and never never been able to get them back. And I'm also going to make a point that I, I Mr. Tyson did a good job. I'm sorry he's here and going through this, but no one in you know substantially done is done. You get paid when you're done. You don't get paid and say, we're going to come back someday. It took me months, but months to try to get this the right part of this. But it, is it actually done now? Still it problem? is. Well, they haven't been there in almost a year. So it's not done? I don't know. Mr. Chairman, if I may respond briefly to what Mr. Ventrone said. Mr. Ventrone went out of his way to make it crystal clear that the contract is between the property owner and Mr. Tyson, and that he has no contractual relationship um, in any way, shape, or form. Um, yet, it seems to me from what he said is that based upon his belief that the property owner, pursuant to his contract directly with Mr. Tyson, withheld it at some point he said $9,000 and said it was unreasonable relative to the amount of work that was on the punch list. It was actually less, it was half that amount, less than half that amount. He's no, saying no, that he isn't. Yeah, 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 as of February 5th, it is not a that I've seen that That's it was true. originally 9,000 something. It was. Since that time frame, I've seen an email where it was. And once his body got involved, it paid dollars On February. Oh, hold on. I want one person to speak at a time. Uh, on February 5th. Hold on, Mr. Ventrone. Continue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If it was 9,000 at one point and it went down to $4,300. I think the point that needs to be... But what you're saying, you're right, because there is an email here through the mayor's office where half of this got paid. I can show you the email if I dig it out. Maybe Sandy can for me too. But anyway, we're down to 40 some hundred dollars. Mr. Ventrone is saying that the work was completed, Mr. Tyson should be paid, and that this contract was completely between Mr. Hebert, managing uh, member and of Hanover Properties in Mr. Tyson's company, yet he withheld the very letter that the commission needed to say that the work was done until tonight. Because they still owed money because he was just saying he's not gonna he wasn't gonna write the letter until all work was completed and everyone was paid. Once all work was done and everyone was paid, the letter would be lit the letter would be written. But uh, the point I'm trying to make to the to, to you November of twenty seventeen then? Yeah. But he, they still not paid. They still owe money. But, but, but I don't. What right? What right did Mr. Ventrone have to withhold the letter saying that the work had been totally completed by Mr. Tyson? The right, that's the, why we're all the here. right that the contract gives me that states that both parties agree that I, as the architect, will administer the contract. That's the right that I have. I don't have a. There is a reason that the architect doesn't have a contractual relationship with the contractor. It's kind of double dipping. I don't get paid by the contractor. Whether the contractor gets paid or not doesn't enrich me anymore or less. I, in this contract has been used for 40, 50 years and provided they sign off saying that they agree that I will administer the contract. So it is my job to be sure at that point, while I work for Mr. Hebert, the owner, once we go into construction, the role as the architect somewhat changes. It becomes more of a objective role that you have to act fairly to both parties to make sure, again, it's bottom in my- line, I appreciate yeah. your comments. The bottom line here is this company has not been finished paid, 4,800 approximately, Maureen, I don't know the exact amount, you, I have it here, but you probably- $4,365. $4,365. And Mr. Ventron was saying the reason that this letter of completion wasn't written is because people are still owed money. So that's that's one of the questions and that's one of the reasons why we're here. Just one last point on that and I think that um, I have something to tell the commission I think that can end all of this. Um, number one is that my client reached out repeatedly to Mr. Ventrone asking him specifically why he wasn't providing the letter that the commission was looking for. He ignored all the requests. He had been paid in full by my client. He had no basis not to respond. There's a paper trail that documents this. So to the extent that Mr. Ventrone takes the position that he needs to look out for the contractor getting paid for the withholding that Mr. Hebert had done, um, why didn't he respond to Mr. Hebert who repeatedly asked him why he had been given the letter to the commission that he presented tonight? That being said, um, if the letter has been submitted tonight uh, by Mr. Ventrone, all the work is, quote, signed off on, my client is prepared to deliver a check to Mr. Tyson tonight. Thank you. So now both of you spoke 
we, I, if anybody on the board wants to speak about my, this. My thing is, when you're done with the project, don't you do a final walkthrough to make sure the customer is satisfied, and then you get final payment? Like, but, yes, typically. Normal? By that point, Why my relationship with Mr. Hebert had ended. But you still... I'd be happy to walk through the project if you wanted to see it. But again, there were well, the majority of the work, two minor things, a cracked pane of glass was replaced, it's easy to see, and a simple board was to the bottom. This is not, this is not very technical. And quite frankly, at that point, I would take the contractor's word if it was done. It's very easy to see if it wasn't. This, is, this isn't something that is, that is a subtle architectural issue that maybe perhaps only I am going to be able to discern the difference. I think it could have ended a lot sooner if you did a walkthrough exactly. saying what needs to be fixed. He would have been there. Boom. It seemed like nice folks. I'm completely I mean, with you. Dave's been in business for, I don't know, 30 years and been paying bills the whole back 4000 I don't see it as. So this could have been settled without us doing all this. I agree. You know? It could have been settled, I think, probably between the contractor and with the owner just as easily. John, anything else? I'm done. Anyone else on the board? Yeah, I'd like to know. Okay. Charlie? Mr. Van Trump, you've got plenty of jobs like, throughout the city on the CPA, right? A few, yes. Yeah, no, well, yeah, three. Have you, did walk, have you done walkthroughs through all these jobs? Because you're supposed to, right? Uh, at the end, at the final. Yeah, the absolutely. Final we, we, we do it throughout construction and we do it so at the end. How come you didn't walk through to Dave's? I just, as I explained, I was there on June 23rd. There were two minor things to be done. At that point, it wasn't completed. Should you walk through again? I, I, as I've said, I would be happy to walk through. It'll take me all of a minute. Okay. That's we, we were there for less than a day to finish it, and I sent Richard pictures while we were done. He knows it was done. And those, those pieces of wood that we put on, that wasn't even in my contract. I just did it so I could get paid. I'm going to let the two of you speak in a minute as soon as the board finishes questions with Mr. French. Okay. So when we're not, you will speak. So I understand everything that's going on. And for me, this is very typical of construction. So the discussion that we're having here, we could ask the fire museum to come in. They're still working on last year's project. We can ask a lot of the other projects that are still going on. I, I guess what I'm trying to get to is that when we voted, we knew this project was still, as, on, as far as I'm concerned, is ongoing regardless if it was, uh, you know, $4,000 a zone here or whatever. Uh, Lafayette Durfee House, they're still doing their chimney. So what I'm saying is this is typical of construction. Is that correct, Richard? Absolutely. So I, I, I know that we've asked them here to clarify this. But well, the reason why we're here is we received an email from Architectural Preservation Group saying they had completed the work and they have not got paid. That's where the confusion is. Understood. That's why I voted the way I did because I had this letter saying this particular contractor was not paid. Right, but in all fairness, uh, Jim, we heard that as part of our deliberation, Correct. and we voted, Correct. and it still went in favor of Mr. Heber. That's all I'm trying to say. That's okay. So, any other questions for Mr. Ventro? I'd like you to, to speak if you'd like. Well, one thing I'd like to say is um, the amount that still owed us is is 15 percent of my contract. Not a small amount, not 5%. It's, it's a substantial amount. My contract was not for $50,000. If it was $1, it's still your dollar. I understand, but that, I was, that was a misrepresentation. It's 5%. It's not 5%. It's 15%. My contract with Mr. Hebert was, was with change orders came to $29,039. That's... That's how much I I was. And you're uh, still owed four thousand three hundred. Three hundred sixty-five dollars and forty-nine cents. Yeah, which is fifteen percent. Does anybody have any questions to the contractor? And just to clarify, that was paid on that that for the half of what was due four thousand three hundred sixty-five dollars and forty-nine or fifty cents was paid on February fifth of twenty eighteen. Were there any other contractors that worked on anything with this project? 
No, I didn't. Did anyone else want to add? I had you paid, please submitted other bills, including Mr. Ventrone's bills. There was other work done. I believe we spent in north of 80 some thousand dollars to 70 some thousand dollars or something. So other work, other contractors worked on their projects? I had other work come in, other work. Regarding this, regarding these windows? Yes. Um, and like we received, the day that we voted, we received a, a packet about the upfront projects with all the invoices. Um, Sandy received it the day before, I believe. Uh, she came to my office. The day before we voted, was it? Well, I don't know what you got it. Yeah, it was before that. So we received it the day of our vote. And but looking at this, there's um, Ventrone, architecture, Ventrone Architecture, there's Architectural Preservation Group, there's also um, Global Construction Management, which we heard nothing of, and there's also IMG Inc., which we've heard nothing of. Um, I don't believe it's the board's, you know, you don't select who I hire, right? But who is, IMG, the, who is IMG Inc.? It's, a, it's an affiliate of my company, and Global's another company I use. So, so you basically you paid yourself to finish no, the work? No, I paid laborers. But that's all over and above the $50,000 anyways. But, but it, it, so it's, it's, a, it's, a sub, it's, a comp, it's a company of your own? Right, but it's over the 50000 It wasn't part of the 50000 It's way over the, the amount. It, the, the totals that I have don't add up to that. The totals I have. Well, she done. sat in my office for a couple of hours and we exceeded a lot of the numbers. One thing I'd actually like to do, and I'll either she looks at this now or she wants, Sandy, Sandy has been kind of the go-between and the uh, person that everybody's kind of like nailed on this project. Um, she's one receiving all the emails, which I'm not particularly a fan of, because the emails are independent and, and sent back and forth to you and you and me and him, and it's, it's confusing. There's, I mean, a piece of paper that comes to this board is a lot clearer that comes to everyone. There's a lot of misconstrued information between a lot of people here. But I'd like Sandy, and Sandy's been the brunt of a lot Mr. of it. Mr. Susan, I'm gonna have to be very No, clear. excuse me, one, hold on one second, I'm speaking. I'm gonna let Sandy speak for a second here because she said nothing, and she's received a lot of emails. Okay. So I'm gonna let Sandy take the floor for a second. Okay, so I met with Mr. Heber and his wife in his office, and we did, we went painfully through all of the invoices and receipts to compile a list of what was included in the project and obviously we came up with architectural preservation group had four of Intron architect then we had global construction management and IMG Inc and it totaled 5281136 that day so these two invoices were part of that award okay okay and that's what we came up with the day that the three of us met in your office because okay. you gave me all those receipts mm -hmm. So, and they all, all those invoices related to the windows, because we looked at them closely right. that day. Right. So what right. I did is then I put the report together for the committee so that they could look to see that your invoices matched your work, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and then obviously the Architectural Preservation Group and Tone Architect, they were known vendors for the project. And global construction and IMG management. Now it's like you know the committee's questioning who are they? Who are they? You know, I get the invoices. They relate to the project. Right, I'm just I, I'm concerned that as far as if I want if I brought somebody in to do work inside of other work to do some work around the windows, they they work is that people like that. One of them though, the global construction management invoice, which says global construction management, 462 Second Street. Sign, and it's signed by, I believe, a con. You're saying you're on global construction? No, I'm not. I'm not. But why is the check written out to the individual person and not global construction management? Because that's how we asked, that's how I pay him. That's what he wanted. I but is that, but it's, it's really the, the contract. It could be an individual person. That person could say, hey, you know what? You never paid me. I'm global construction management. Well, how have, do we know that? I have a good relationship with It doesn't him. matter. I'm just saying, according, we don't know that. I mean, you might know that, but I don't know that. I mean, I have a business. I'm a person who owns well, a business. Well, to your point, to your point, Mr. Susan, going back to what we were talking about, you know, you're going to pay somebody. You build a house. Are you going to pay your contract until you get your certificate of occupancy? You can move into the house. No, you're going to make sure you get all your sign-offs and your inspections done. Then you pay that check. I don't know anybody's going to come back and finish this work after I give them the four thousand dollars. And I'm here we are today. About, all these people. I'm in not this speaking room. about. Excuse, that. Me, excuse me. It all due respect. Well, that letter in front of you, I've been asking. 
I've been asking and asking. I got emails. No, hold on. I let you speak. It's my turn to speak here. I'm talking about this one particular invoice that you submitted to Sandy, yep. and I just want a question on it. It's called, it's Global Construction Management is the company, but the check is written out to John Ferreira. Because he asked me to write it to him, and I have no problem doing but, that. But, I mean, this is, this is, this is funds through the city here. It, I think that's where the paper trail kind of gets Dude, I, strange I don't me. understand if they, now this board's questioning a county. I paid John Ferreira. He's the owner of that company. That's how we That's what we're there. supposed to do. Oh, I wasn't aware of that, but okay. But I'm, that's my question, so, I mean, yeah, and that's the answer, and that's fine. If I may just clarify one thing about this letter you know as well. Not yet. We're going to let Sandy finish. Did you, did you want to speak about emails or anything else? Oh, or? Um, well, I mean, Mr. Heber and myself and your wife, Matt, we, like I said, we painfully went through all of the, that documentation with the hopes of resolving this issue for you. Um, then Mr. Um, Heber stated he received a copy of the email that was sent from Mr. Ventrone dated May 15th from one of the CBC members. That's the email you sent me. Um, kind of a disparaging email to me after everything I did for you. I mean, I went above and beyond to try to resolve this for you all the parties. As Jim said, these are all the emails that have gone back and forth for me trying to help you resolve this issue. Um, and then you sent me that email questioning my integrity. Well, I wasn't questioning integrity. I was very it, upset because I saw the video and I saw the records where the, where the letter was referenced. I haven't seen a, I reread my email and I read, and I, didn't, I haven't seen a letter, but I, the letter was referenced in the minutes of the video I watched online of the meeting where it was referenced he sent it. But yet here I am sending emails to everybody and no response to me trying to resolve this to get into compliance with your regulations and the, and the rules, playing by the ball, playing by the rules, and I didn't want something to come up and say, hey, you haven't got that final sign-up from Matron, he's non-responsive, but yeah, he took the time to draft that letter, but yet still does, still at that time, this is nearly three months ago, yeah, did not produce the final sign-off. And, and if I may, Sandy, please yes. let me address, because I wrote you an email. Yes. When Mr. Hebert wrote me asking for that letter, he wants that letter, I immediately wrote to Ms. Dennis, to Sandy, saying, I have been asked to write this letter. It was in March. I would be happy to write the letter, but they haven't been fully paid. Please advise. And, and time passed before that. So there was my, I was reticent to reply. I was waiting to hear, what do you want me to do? from the board and I didn't hear, and I'm not casting aspersions to anyone, everyone's very busy, but I did write a letter to you saying, "What? please advise, what do you want me to do? I'm happy to write a letter, however, they haven't been paid, and I know wouldn't, I, tomorrow we wouldn't do that. What do you want me to do? And I was never given direction on what to do. So I did respond in a way to Mr. Hebert by immediately asking the board, what would you have me do? He hasn't paid them yet. The work is done, and I can certainly certify that it's done in accordance with the Secretary of the Interior standards, but he's not paid. What do you want me to do? Please advise. So I did write that in March. Mr. And Chairman? Then, and then yeah. that March letter, that, in that March letter, it was, it was stated, I'll just go through some of these emails quickly, um, and I guess I could read this email, but really feel a little uncomfortable. Um, I had given, had you given me this and providing the CPC board ex accepts this as a sign off, I would pay Tyson and, and avoid the mess that this, this been created. Uh, one document I've been requesting for months has been in, in your possession for nearly a month and a half and it never occurred to you to let me know when in fact I did not have that document in my possession. I've well, never I got that a, from the I've video. I've never had that document in my possession. An email isn't a document. An email isn't a formal letter stating that a project is complete and meets the Secretary of Interior standards. Um, I have diligently, painfully, and they can attest to it as well, my promptness in trying to get this resolved back and forth. I went above and beyond for you. I have gone above and beyond for you. I tried to 
respond to you Absolutely. in a, in a I mean, I would like an method. apology if anyone thinks they've said well, something wrong to her. I sincerely apologize to you because that wasn't my and intent, I, but I, I, am, I am beyond frustrated with this nonsense. But, yeah, you know, but beyond email, frustrated. Yeah, an email isn't a letter. And I, and I told you the last time you emailed me, you emailed me, have you received the letter? And I emailed back, no. Right. I, would never withhold information from a project, nor would I ever withhold and I get information that. from a And I apologize ever. to you, but do you understand all these emails, and you, I copied you on every yes. one. And okay. I have a new email address for the public. So none it's of them, CBC all this is going around, but these communication board. issues we're getting over here. And all I had to do is get this done. It's 4,000, my wife's here behind me, I have their done. check. All Done these deal. months and months and months of working, and yes, it's done. Everyone's stepped up to the plate, they did their job, and it's done. Mr. Chairman, if I may, just briefly. <clears throat> Mr. Ventron has acknowledged here tonight that um, there was certain work out on what he characterized as a punch list that needed to be done. He communicated that to Mr. Hebert. Um, Mr. Hebert um, received an email as late as the fall of last year um, from Mr. Ventron um, being critical of the contractor that hasn't been paid. Eventually, Mr. Ventron says the work was done, but in response to inquiry from Mr. Moniz and, um, and Mr. Brand, he acknowledges he's never done a final walkthrough. My client's reaching out to him as late as April 19th of this year, asking him why he hasn't submitted the letter that the commission needs. And instead of responding to the party with whom he has the contract, apparently, he, he reaches out to, uh, to Sandy Dennis. Um, wouldn't common sense alone dictate that he write back to Mr. Hebert and say, the reason I haven't submitted the letter is that Mr. Tyson has completed the work. I'm ready to sign off on the project. You need to pay him. Had he done that, we wouldn't be here tonight. Well, That's the are. undeniable fact. And I, I think people had, had reached a level of frustration. I mean, this went as far as the mayor's office. And when people are distressed and frustrated, I feel some kind of an obligation to try to help them and ease their pain with it. Um, they were struggling. Mr. Hebert was struggling. Mr. Ventrone's been struggling. I try to be a peacemaker. We all have to work together. So yes, they came to me as their admin to try to help resolve this situation. And I so too, but sorry. We tried resolving. No, I, I, I don't think that, um, you know, my client has sincerely apologized um, to and the extent he expressed frustration. You know, he handed you that email. I don't have a letter. I, I, I read, watched I the video. I handed you that email that What's you that? said that a committee member handed you that email. No, I, I watched the video. I said I meant to say I'm aware That's of the letter. Was in your email. I don't. I don't have a letter. It was, it was extremely. I have emails. Our emails. Questioning my credibility and my integrity. So, and I accept your apology. And, and I want to say I too was subject to caustic emails as well from Mr. Hebert dating when the glass arrived. It's quite plainly the relationship soured. Hostile, caustic emails when I'm saying, the glass is broken. I, you know, look, here are the photographs. I can read you the email if you like. And as Mr. Mr. Tyson is, is saying, and I wish I had recalled, I was sent photographs of it. So the work was done. I mean, we're not talking, remember people, we are not talking about, you know, whether or not some very complex issue was resolved. We're talking about a strip of wood, which Mr. Tyson is Volunteer. correct, Volunteer. voluntarily put in, and a cracked pane of glass. This is not but big architecture. But could have went with letter and asked for payment, and this could have been done with. We're here sitting. I have several to emails, of sir, where and I'm I am. I'm tired of listening to. I have several you emails where. That letter and we would have been done I have several emails, paid. sir, where so I am saying to I him, know. Email, please. Email, email. Please pay him. Email, okay? You should pay him. But they're still not paid, Joe. Why well, doesn't sign off? Why didn't he come because and ask he, for payment? We Mr. Just went Chairman, through this contract, right? We just went through this, though. He, he's not going to write the letter until everyone's paid. Mr. Chairman, if, Mr. Could Chairman, if I could, could is that the um, order? I'd like to ask a question. I'd like to ask a question of the the uh, contractor. Okay. When did you inform uh, Mr. Hebert that you had replaced the broken glass? And that the piece, the strip of wood, was installed. Do we have that date? I don't. Uh, approximately. Hey. Well, is that last hey. year? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. On November? Yeah, sure. So yeah. in November yeah. of last year, this is July 10th. I don't know. 
it seems to me that if Mr. Hebert knew that the project was complete and that he wanted to say, the project is complete, I'm ready to pay this amount. Instead, that amount of money was held and held and held. Okay, you know what? At this point, I think we've heard all, all we're going to do is keep going around the bush here. Yeah. We're done. So anyway, I appreciate everybody here. I'd like to know if the board has anything else to say on this matter. Okay. Mr. So Brand made a motion and there was a second by you. So um, we're still on item number four. The discussion, the discussion of Project 18, that's what we have. We're still on 4A, discussion of FY18. Yeah, that's why I want to make a motion to send it back to the city council as is. We still, we still have 4B, which is the FY19 project. We're still on FY18 discussion. Uh, make them voting F19. We're not there yet. We're on FY18. 4A, FY18. Okay. So we're finished with 4, 4A. So fiscal year 19, does anybody have any discussion on this project? Just what I have been repeating all along, everything that we've discussed today is typical of construction. Uh, if we call all of the other projects that are currently under uh, construction still, we would still get the same detailed information of this is still going on, this is still going on. So this is very common. So like John was saying, if no one else has anything further to add, you know, uh, I believe that we should send back the original appropriation for the city council. Um, and that's it. So, you know, that was your motion at the beginning. So we're now on FY19. There's no further discussion. There's no further discussion? Can we take a vote on John's motion? I'll second John's motion. It was already second by John. All in favor? Aye. Can you repeat the motion, John? Uh, I'll make a motion to send uh, the projects that we uh, okayed for this year, uh, send it back to the committee as, as it stands. As voted. As voted. Right, that we're making no changes, that we're just sending back the original document back to the city council. Uh, we've done what they wanted to do, which was to hear additional information. We've done that. So we're just sending back the original appropriation back to the city council. Could I get a roll call of this vote? Victor? Yes, sir. Kristen? No. Tony? Yes. I'm voting no. John? Yes. John? Yes. Charles? Yes. Motion carries. Um, so one other thing I'd like to resolve, I see a check here. Um, will this be a check to uh, Architectural Preservation Group? Yes, payment in full with the amount that they just Thank provided. You. Thank you. Would you like me to revise that letter? Or I would like you to revise line? that letter and have give a certificate of completion to Mr. Heber. And also send it to copy. the board. Yeah, if you could send a copy. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll remove the line relative to payment. Um, I just want to make a note that we have a meeting next Thursday, the 18th, for the board. Um, any other? Yes, can we add that we have a vote for a new chair, vice chair, and secretary? Okay. Any other discussion? Mr. Chair? We're done. Okay. Meeting is adjourned. Make, I'll make a motion to adjourn to someone. Second. Second. Oh, I'll, I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.